Obviously, we're uh, looking very closely to ensure that we continue to deliver the important services that uh, Canadians rely on the federal government for. Uh, however, we also believe in collective bargaining, and that is where uh, the discussions at the table with the public service unions uh, continue to happen. Over 150,000 public server work, service rather, workers vote to strike. The Public Service Alliance of Canada, PSAC, announced the results of the vote today. It comes on the heels of more than 30,000 CRA workers also voting to strike. So how many people could walk off the job? 120,000 PSAC members are in a strike position as of today, and 35,000 CRA, that's Canada Revenue Agency workers, are in a strike position as of Friday. A strike that large could see service disruptions to employment insurance, immigration, applications, passport applications, delays at the borders and airport, and a halt or a slowdown of grain exports. The cost of living is at the heart of the negotiations. The union says the majority of workers make between $40,000 and $65,000 a year. PSAC is calling for a 13.5% raise over three years. The union also wants remote work protections enshrined into collective agreements. Let's bring in Public Service Alliance of Canada President Chris Aylward. Thank you for being here. Uh, I know it's really, uh, you know, sort of very busy time for you. Well, let me start with this. You have 120,000 workers. Most of them are making between, how many of them are making between 40 and 65,000? The, the vast majority of our members. Uh, we, we have 65% of our, our, of our members are women, and uh, the vast majority of our members make anywhere from 40 to $65,000 a year. Uh, that's hardly a, a, a salary uh, that can you know, suffer another rollback, basically, and that's what we're looking at uh, currently with the wage offer that's on the table uh, from the government. What is the wage offer? Right now, the wage offer is 2.06% per year. Uh, and you know there, there's no way with and you know 4.5 percent you might you might think well 2.06 percent and 4.5 percent is not that much of a difference uh, but but you know it is when you project pro project that out 5 10 15 years that's that's a considerable uh, amount of money uh, and when you look at the of course the cost of living today the rising cost of uh, inflation uh, as well in the last past uh, three years for, so for the same three years that we're bargaining for inflation is at 13.8%. As you just said correctly, we're asking for 13.5% over the same period because we want to make sure that our members at least try to keep up with the rate of inflation and the so, cost so of living. So you're asking for a lot less than what the CRA employees are asking for? Yes. Okay. The, and, and the reason for that is that our Treasury Board members uh, started bargaining, began bargaining prior to the Canada Revenue Agency uh, starting their bargaining. So when we started bargaining with the Canada Revenue Agency, uh, it was, you know, 40-year highs that we've seen uh, in respect to inflation. So that's why that bargaining team went in uh, seeking the, uh, the wages that they're looking so for. So, Chris, let me ask you this. Are you getting any closer to a resolution here? Are you, is it, how, how, how's the atmosphere at the bargaining table? Well, we are at the table this week. We're scheduled uh, to be at the table until Friday. Our teams are ready. They're, they're ready to bargain. They're ready to get to a deal. Our goal is not to go on strike. Our goal is to get to a tentative agreement. This is a critical week for the government because we will we'll know in the next, in the coming days, literally, uh, exactly where we are uh, at the bargaining so table. So is, I, I know that this is a, you know, bargaining position, a, you know, a strike mandate always makes your position stronger. Are your members really ready to walk off the job? Look, I mean, we've asked our members to participate. Uh, they gave us an overwhelming uh, strike mandate, and they realize as well that it is a, you know, leveraging our bargaining power. Uh, but any time we've ever had a strike, the members were there, and I have no doubt they'll be there this time because they are extremely, extremely frustrated, as are all workers in this country, whether they're unionized, non-unionized, public sector, private sector, all workers in this country deserve a fair and decent uh, wage increase in the current economic climate. Uh, and, and that's what we're asking for, something just to keep up with inflation and the cost of living. So when you make these arguments to the government, because let me tell you what I read in the uh, statement by Treasury Board. I said there are many areas where both parties could reach a compromise, including wage increases. So they say you can use... And if the PSAC, that's your union, shares our commitment to bargain in good faith, 
Are they intimating that you're not bargaining in good faith? We've been at the bargaining table since June of 2021. Uh, we've been there every single time we were ready to bargain. Uh, we didn't stall this round of bargaining. The government stole it. And that's why, why now Why are we're they stalling it? Well, I, that's a good question for uh, this, this, this government. Uh, because we're not too sure why they're stalling it. Uh, in, you know, almost two years into bargaining, uh, and, and as I said, in the current economic uh, climate, and we can't get a deal, they can't bring a deal to the table that's fair and, and, and decent. I, I, I want to ask you about remote work, because you're demanding that to be enshrined in your collective. What? How many days do you work from home? Do you get to work from home all the time, lucky you? Okay, so first of all, we're, we're not asking for all, you know, all of our members to be working remotely uh, five days a week. What we want is language in our collective agreement so that everybody understands what the game rules are. Uh, when they, the, the, the government announced the return to the workplace back in December, uh, we said that at that time it was ill-advised and an ill-timed decision. And they're proving us right, because now you have all these exemptions, they're talking about extending it out for uh, another year before it's fully implemented. So at the time of the announcement, it, it, it certainly wasn't, uh, as I said, it was very ill-timed. And we want to make sure, because right now in federal public workplaces, it's chaotic. You know, members are going into the workplace, there's no desk, there's no computer for them to work at. So what are they doing? They're getting back into vehicles and they're driving back home. Or if there is a desk to, for them to work at, they're opening their laptop and doing exactly the same thing they would be doing at home. So we want to make sure that we have language so that everybody understands the, what the game rules are and it's implemented fairly and consistently. Yeah. The announcement in December tried to uh, attempt it, a uh, cookie cutter approach, one size fits all. The federal government is too big, too diverse uh, for something like that to work. And that's why we need uh, language in our collective agreements. And, and we'll see, uh, uh, Chris Aylward, what kind of public support you get in the next few days as 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 you bargain. I, I, w I wish you good luck and you know hopefully we won't have to get to that. Uh, thanks for making the time. Public Service Alliance of Canada President Chris Aylward.